Check the description for the following discount codes. Before we get into the video, don't forget Sim Racing Studios Power Win Giveaway Competition is running right now. Details in the description. Today I thought it would be fun to upgrade the steering wheel on my trusty Logitech G920. Now this also applies to the G29, the PlayStation variant, and the G923, the very latest sort of incarnation of this wheelbase from Logitech. It's exactly the same externally, especially when it comes to the, the bit where I put the steering wheel on, it's just changed inside slightly. It's basically the same wheel. So what I've done, I went on eBay and I bought this little 3D printed adapter. It's just like a boss, um, you know, but without a quick release mechanism that you get for a real car, really. It's gonna turn the bolt pattern of the Logitech into a 70 mil um, six bolt pattern for a sort of standard aftermarket steering wheel. I think this was about a tenner. I'll put a screenshot up now if I think about it. Uh, and I opted to get the bolts that, so you use the original Logitech wheel bolts to bolt this to the Logitech base. And there was optional bolts you could buy that would secure your wheel to this. Well, I bought those, only another couple of pound, but it turns out the steering wheel I've bought has actually come with the six bolts that you need anyway, so I didn't need to do that. So something to bear in mind, if you're choosing a wheel, take a peek whether it comes with bolts or not. Now this wheel <clears throat> is STR branded. It is suede. Now I didn't buy the cheapest wheel I could find on eBay or Amazon, which you can get for about 22 pound. They have like a PVC covering because we all know that sometimes buying the very cheapest, is just, it's not gonna last. That'll end up peeling off and it'll be crap. This I actually bought from a motorsport company here in the UK. They do have an eBay shop, so I will link to it. So it is genuine suede. It was about 42 quid. So about 20 pound more than what the sort of the cheapest you could get on eBay and Amazon is. But I thought it's gonna be 20 pound well spent because it will at least be a half decent constructed wheel rather than something where the you know the vinyl might just peel off after a couple of weeks use. I also went for a two inch dish rather than a three inch dish which a lot of these again cheap eBay and Amazon ones are and the reason for that is because obviously the more dish the wheel is the further it's going to stick out towards you I mean this is on my play seat so it may not matter depending what cockpit you use but with the play seat there's not a lot of forward and backward adjustment there's a little bit on this um, steering wheel plate here where you can move it back but not a lot now you do need some clearance because otherwise you won't be able to get to the buttons on the button box type bit once this wheel and this adapter has been fitted so i went for two inch you can see there's a reasonable dish there so that should give me enough clearance just to get my fingers in and press the buttons what the the chap that sell i think it's ozark engineering or something like that um you, again you'll see when i put the screenshot up he says if you use a flat wheel then there's like a, a spacer you can use as well that you would put on top of this to bring the wheel away from this button. It's gonna be like a little button box essentially left behind once we remove this original wheel. Now, why am I doing this? Well, the original wheel, whilst it's perfectly fine, it's a bit small. And for me, small wheels make steering inputs a little twitchy. Like, especially when, if I'm dirt rally, for example, and this isn't my main rig, obviously that's over there, but if I do use this or friends use this, we rally wheels are 33 to 35 centimeters in diameter usually. This is like, I can't remember what this is now, 28? Something like that. It's much, much smaller anyway. So with a larger wheel, you have more finer control of your steering input. It's not as twitchy. If you're in a go-kart simulator, then by all means, it's probably the size of a go-kart steering wheel. That's fine. But for me, and for others that do dirt rally or maybe GT um, racing, we want a slightly larger wheel to give us that slightly finer control input, not quite as twitchy. So this is why we're doing it. One of the, my concerns is about how much detail and response time we're going to lose from this Logitech wheelbase by adding a larger wheel. Larger wheel, diameter gives us more leverage, which means it's gonna be harder for the motor in here to move that bigger wheel as fast and with as much strength as it does this smaller wheel 
that comes as standard. Hello, Ori. You can hear her meowing in the background. Um, she wants to go out and chase leaves because it's a windy day today. She loves running around the garden catching leaves. But I have to go out with her because she's a house cat and I'm here making a video. So she's going to have to stay inside. Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm concerned about whether we'll lose any detail from the force feedback and just whether it will be strong enough to whiz this wheel around at any sort of reasonable speed. Now obviously other people have done this and it seems to work, so I'm confident it should be okay. Anyway, let's get it done, enough of the waffle. Watching um, the instructional video on how to fit this, what you essentially do is just undo the bolts at the back of the wheel, undo the bolts at the front of the wheel, take it all off and put it back together without this original Logitech wheel in. Now, and then you just bolt this on the front in place of the wheel. Now, it would probably be a lot easier to do this on my desk, but I can't be asked. It's, it's already on the play seat. My cables are kind of managed and cable tied together. It'd just be a bit of a pain in the butt to remove it. And I think also this is one of those times in life where you think to yourself, you know it'll be easier if you take it off and do it on the desk, but you're not gonna do it and you're gonna try and do it in situ anyway. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start whizzing this apart. I might just speed it up. Um, if it takes too long. I will link to the detailed video on how to do this, but as I say, it looks like you just undo the bolts, take it off, do the bolts up, put it back on. So not really much to, to show you, but uh, yeah, let's get stuck in. Okay, yeah, so that's everything apart. Steering wheel is now off. All I did was literally undo all the screws on the inside. There's three, except three in the center here that are in like a T shape. You may or may not be able to see those. But when you get it open, it's pretty logical. There's two silver screws at the top here. They're the last two that secure it to this wheel. So once you've undone everything else, you undo those two and it's off. It is pretty simple. And like I say, I'll put um, a link to the step-by-step -step sort of close-up video that I watched before doing this. Um, I may even actually incorporate it into the video at the very end. So now what I need to do is put all my buttons back in because I let them fall out like a bell end. And, uh, and then just put it back together. So that is the button box fully assembled again, minus the wheel. It is really as simple as undo all the screws that you need to for it to come apart, take the wheel off, screw it all back together. That's all there is to it. Don't lose your buttons. I let mine all fall out as you may or may not have seen. So make sure they go back in the same way if you do. And that's it. So what we should be able to do now, I believe, is just plug this back in, screw it back onto the wheelbase with the, with our new adapter in place. Yep, yeah, that sits in there like that. My adapter's over here. Oh, I'll tell you what, my knees are sore on this bloody carpet. Should have done it on the desk, eh? Um, right, right, so it looks like, I don't actually know which way around this goes. So I'm gonna say, okay, it's got some little recesses cut out here and there's some raised sections on here. So I'm gonna say it goes on with the smooth side facing outwards for your steering wheel to bolt on and the side that's got little recesses, I was about to say machined out, but printed out, I think is gonna go on this way round. So let's have a look. Is that a, they offset slightly? 
I think this may only go on one way. Or in my case, not go on at all. Oh yeah, there it is, it's just snug. Okay, it's just snug, that's all it is, which is good, I suppose, because you don't want any play in your steering wheel. So now you get your original bolts that held the steering wheel on there, your four mil and your four mil Allen key. And you do these back up. This really is easy, isn't it? No special skills was required. Two Phillips screwdrivers, a precision one and a slightly larger one, and a four mil Allen key so far is all I've used. I suppose if you want to be sensible, you could check all your buttons still work before you go screwing it back together. But who wants to do that? We know it's going to be all right. Just like I knew at the start of the video that I'll be able to do it in situ and not have to put it on my desk. It's actually not really been, apart from having slightly sore knees on this carpet, it's not actually been any more awkward doing it with this still fitted to the play seat than it would have been on the desk. So should anyone have theirs all nicely cable managed to a, a cockpit of some sort, just do it in situ. Save yourself dicking about taking it off unnecessarily. It's not hard. So again, this is plastic, so we don't want to over tighten anything here because it will just strip the threads out and then you'll be screwed. You almost get a little, a little squeak just as it gets to the, to the point where it's nipped up. You may even, you know, hear that little squeak? That's just as it's feeling, feeling snug. Yeah, you can hear that. So that's rough, that's about where, where I would say do it. Yeah, it's all done up. So we can still access all the buttons. You can't see this yet. Well, yeah, you probably never will, because I ain't going to move the camera. So now we need to grab, or maybe I will, I don't know. Um, now we need to grab the steering wheel itself, which is here, and fit it on. I'm quite excited. It should be fun. Now on this wheel, there's a little retaining ring on the back there that I need to remove before I can, before I can get the bolts out. In fact, I need a different Allen key for that. Bear with. Oh, actually... You know what I haven't done? Put the screws in the back. Getting one step ahead of myself. So don't forget to put your screws in the back. Okay, so the back bolts are in. Bolts, screws are in. Let's get these out of here so I can get the wheel on. Now this wheel does come with a center push horn, but there'll be no clearance for that. And obviously, what do you need a horn for? I mean, you could wire it into something in there, I suppose, but if you can get to all your buttons, you wouldn't need to anyway. So what that leaves us with now is an outer ring here that did hold the horn in place. You can use that if you want in the center of the steering wheel there, or you can just fit the wheel without it. I guess it will be down to whether the bolts are too long without that centerpiece in, and I'm gonna say the bolts will be, I don't know, it's gonna be close. I'll put one in and see whether we need to use the bolts or not. Oh, that's weird. Like, you would need self-tappers, unless I can just get it to get started, and it goes in. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that was unexpected. This is my first sort of experience with 3D printed adapters. So it kind of spun me out there. I expected to see a thread pre-tapped and there isn't, as I'm screwing this in, it's tapping its own thread. Okay, fair enough. Now, does it look like it's gonna to be too long? Yes, okay, so the bolts that come in my wheel, if I don't use this center piece, are gonna to be too long. So what do I wanna do? Do I wanna use those? with that piece on, or do I use the ones that come with it? 
Yeah, we'll leave the, we'll use the center ring. Why not? Because the bolts they sent me with the 3D adapter are silver and the bolts that come with the wheel are black and I think the black ones look nicer. So we'll do it that way. It might even be easier to do what I did, which is get the thread started without the steering wheel in your hand, because that might be a bit heavy and a bit cumbersome. And then once you've got some thread, start putting your wheel on. Right, let's get these done up. I got my wheel fitted and I was just checking all my buttons worked and I discovered that the menu button and LSB were not clicking like they are now. So what I've had to do is take the wheel off again and it turns out that if you do these bolts up that hold the adapter on to the point where they squeak like I showed you earlier, that actually is too tight and for whatever reason holds these buttons squished on even though they're not actually touching the mechanism i think it's just squeezing it in the middle squeezing the plastic together enough to activate them so here's a tip as you're fitting this see i've just done, do you hear I've, this one's now stopped clicking so i'm gonna have to back that off just half a turn and now it's clicking again so click no click click so you're going to have to do those up only as much as you can before the buttons stop working. Now, we'll see whether there's any movement in this or not. I don't think there will be because it is done up. It's just it's plastic, so you can you can tighten it more, you know. See, yeah, that one's that one's now not clicking either. Back it off half a turn. Click. Okay. Everything's clicking. So let's just, I'm just gonna go a fraction of a turn back on each one of those. Yep, they're all clicking. No, there's no movement in it at all, so that's fine. But yeah, as you do these original bolts up to hold your adapter on, make sure they click still. Right, now we'll get the wheel back on. Well, that's the wheel installed. And I must say, I think it looks the tits. Such a big improvement from this little go-kart steering wheel that was on there before. Um, I will grab the camera and give you a little close-up. Uh, and then what I'll do is get it all set up, plugged in, and we'll try it out in some dirt rally. Because of course, it, just because it looks good, doesn't mean it works good. And all my buttons are still clicking. Yes, obviously they are a little fiddly, to get to behind the wheel there, but that is the compromise you're gonna make for having a full size steering wheel on there. But you can get to them and that's, you know, what you, you only use it to what? Start, stop, navigate menus, restart races. Once you're racing, you're racing. Um, you know, and also for PC users particularly, the paddles are accessible, RSB, LSB are very accessible. You can always map those to be the things you use the most. So let me grab that camera um, and we'll have a quick close up. There it is. And what a beauty. I think that actually looks the tits. So you can just about, or you may be able to make out the 3D printer, printed adapter in the center there. There is a logo on it, but I think that looks really good fitted to the wheel. You know, we'll see the wheel base and we'll see how it is to use in a minute. And again, the screws I undid at the back, you can just make out here and here and one there. And of course there's two on the other side as well. And so it, it, it was really very simple, literally under all the screws, take it to bits, take the wheel out, screw it all back together, and then just screw that adapter on, making sure that you don't over tighten the bolts and the buttons stop working. So that, yeah, that really is, that really is it. So let's get it set up. Let's play some Dirt Rally. 
Right, it's all fitted. I'm in the seat. We've got Dirt Rally loaded up. I've had to make two tweaks to the force feedback settings. I just double checked all my controls worked. Often they change bindings when switching from one setup to another. So I've had to turn the self-aligning torque up to 100 from 50 and the wheel friction from zero up to 15. The wheel just felt too soft and lifeless otherwise. So I've literally just sort of ran down this first bit and just tried it out. So let's have a little blast, see what she's really like. Straight away, it feels nice just to have a larger wheel in the hand than it does the smaller one. You can just be a little more precise with your steering inputs because that wheel's, you know, just, just that little bit bigger. You can move it further without it having such greater results you know, on the, on the game input, so to speak, which is what we expected, of course. Don't know whether it will make me a better driver uh, in Dirt Rally, but we'll see. <laughs> now, as far as sort of, has it, have we lost some of the detail in the force feedback? I want to say we definitely have. I mean, not, not massive, but we definitely have. And again, that is to be, that is to be expected because the motor's got to move a, a larger wheel, you know, and we've got more leverage on it. Does it ruin the experience? No, definitely not. I think I would still definitely rather have this larger wheel than, um, than the smaller one. It just feels so much nicer. Oh, little stack. Well, there we go. That will do. It's never going to be a good run when I'm trying to talk. But yeah, I think this is a very worthwhile upgrade. You do lose a little bit of the power from the wheelbase because of the extra leverage and perhaps even the slightly heavier wheel makes a difference as well. But it's to be expected. And, and as we all know, or a lot of us know, some of the fastest sim racers in the world run very low force feedback settings because it's much easier. In fact, some of the fastest esports races in the world use this very wheelbase, um, believe it or not. Um, because when you're not fighting the wheel so much and you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again, every stage is the same, every track's the same, everything's predictable, it's more about muscle memory than it is flying by the seat of your pants once you've learned it enough anyway. So the fact that we have lost a little bit of the sort of force feedback uh, detail is not the end of the world. I think I'd rather have it as it is now than with the smaller wheel and it being so twitchy. And to be honest, I might even be being a little harsh when I say we've lost some detail. I've just spent the last two days driving my Fnatic DD1. So this obviously now feels very, very weak and lacking in detail by comparison. So maybe the loss isn't even as great as what I think it is. I should really have driven this immediately before changing the wheel to do a back-to-back -back comparison. But as far as the adapter, the wheel, it all works great. I've got my little USB handbrake down the side here. It's all lubed up, so it isn't squeaking anymore. Those of you that regularly watch the channel. Um, this is a pretty sweet little setup, I must say. The wheel's definitely, you know, like I said, I didn't buy a cheapo cheapo one. This was 40 odd quid. I'll link to it. I'll also link to the hub adapter. Amazon seem to only have one on there and it's like 40 quid, whereas and it's still 3D printed, whereas this one was only 10 or 12 pounds with its bolt. So I'll link to the Amazon one in case some of you don't have eBay, but you really want to buy the one off eBay because it's a quarter of the price. And ultimately it's just 3D printed, so you know, <laughs> but they're going to be much the same as, as one another. But yeah, there we go. That's how to upgrade your steering wheel on your Logitech. I can get to all the buttons. It is a little fiddly to get your fingers in, but it's going to be, you, you know, you only need them to, to start the race and then you're good to go um, for the most part, at least, you know, in, in Dirt Rally, other games you might not. Oh, paddles. You can still reach the paddles 
it is a bit of a stretch with your fingers. Um, I wouldn't say that I would like it if I was using paddle change. I'd probably extend these um, somehow or potentially even just bend them a little bit because you have got to sort of open your hands to be able to reach them, but you can. I just wouldn't, you know, it's not, it's not as convenient as it should be. But for those of us age pattern shifting, don't make any difference, does it? Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, take it easy.